Oftentimes, it can be hard to evaluate a boxer's worth. We can detect skills and physical talent on a purely visual level, but until the boxer fights someone that can rival him, we'll never know how good he really is. This is why Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua currently stand atop the heavyweight division. They've defeated everyone in their way, with only each other left to beat in order to establish a clear champion. But of all the men they've beaten, Vladimir Klitschko remains Fury and Joshua's holy grail. Now, comparing Joshua and Fury's performances against Klitschko isn't gonna tell us who wins the fight between both men, as that would be triangle theory, which is a flawed concept. But it will highlight both men's strengths and weaknesses, which is what we do on this channel. All right, let's do it. Having entered the pro ranks after winning gold at the 1996 Summer Olympics, Klitschko endured his share of upset losses before acquiring the services of Hall of Fame trainer Emmanuel Stewart. With the Detroit veteran in his corner, Klitschko embarked on a 10-year unbeaten run which saw him best all of the top opponents available. The problem with Klitschko wasn't simply that he was a big fighter. After all, Nikolai Valuev was the biggest of them all and he couldn't manage to beat Chagaev or David Hay, the two men that Klitschko easily outpointed. But it would be disingenuous to affirm that Klitschko's size did not play a factor in his performances. After employing Stuart, Klitschko, a natural power puncher, used a heavy jab, the occasional crosses and plenty of holding to wear down his smaller opponents. His defense was extremely tricky. He would extend his arms, lean back, and pivot away from opponents. His long limbs always stayed above his chin, preventing the shorter man from landing on it. Eventually, his opponents would have to stop chasing, and once they did, Klitschko would whack them with a couple of shots or wear them down with more clenching. The Pavetkin fight is a notorious and quite sexually explicit example of this. When Klitschko fought Fury in Joshua, a big part of his game went out the window, as he no longer enjoyed the size advantage over his opponents. Still, his skill and experience level remained superior, and both Fury and Joshua entered the fights with something to prove. In Fury's case, he opted to box Klitschko from the outside. He kept Klitschko hesitant through feints, jabs, and the occasional power punch. The interesting aspect here was that Klitschko's wrestling tactics lost much of their efficacy as he was now facing a larger man. And although his defensive tactics still proved successful as he lowered Fury's punch output, he himself was unable to find Fury as often as he wanted, partially because he was often kept on his heels by Fury's feint. Although the fight was boring, Fury's game proved to be highly successful, for he took advantage of Klitschko's stance, which was always to lean back in order to make shorter men miss. Against Fury, the tactic backfired, as he was unable to counter Fury off of this position. In the end, Fury dictated much of his pace, landed the cleaner shots, and was the more active man. When Joshua fought Klitschko, the Watford native chose a more offensive approach. He tried opening up on Klitschko early on, and although Joshua found some success, the Ukrainian stance and tricky footwork prevented him from landing as cleanly as he would have liked. In the fifth round, Joshua finally locked in on the elusive Klitschko and managed to drop him, but he miscalculated the intensity of his attack and ended up blowing his wad. He endured Klitschko's follow-up attack, including a trip to the canvas of his own, before rallying in the 11th round to stop the former champ. So, who performed better against Klitschko? On the one hand, Fury didn't get hit as much as Joshua did, and he managed to best the Ukrainian at his own game. Joshua, on the other hand, was hurt and sent to the canvas, 
much to the horror of his hometown crowd. Fury also did something spectacular. He got into Klitschko's head. Fury might seem out of control, but I think one of the reasons why he entered the state of depression after the Klitschko fight is because he's a highly sensitive person, prone to extreme highs and extreme lows. And there's a theory out there which states that highly sensitive people are good at reading body language. What does this have to do with Fury vs Klitschko? Well, it's highly possible that Fury knew what type of person Klitschko was and managed to tap into it in order to get under the Ukrainian skin. Fuck off. In the first Sky Sports face-off, you could tell the difference between Fury and Klitschko's body language. Whereas Fury was relatively relaxed with only some tension on his brow, Klitschko's demeanor appeared much more uncomfortable. He came in with pre-scripted lines about being a therapist and correcting Fury's behavior, all while his face remained tense. You could tell he was annoyed with Fury, and you gotta remember that fighters are psychologically fickle in the sense that a slight deviation in their mindset can affect the way they approach a fight. There was also a point in the segment where Fury was talking and the host, Johnny Nelson, interrupted, which prompted Fury to assert his insistence on continuing to speak. Klitschko then stepped in and warned Nelson that Fury was going to punch him. He then turned to Fury and asked him whether he was going to attack Nelson. This is how Fury responded. Just listen, I, li I listen to you, show some okay. respect and listen to me. I'm not talking Go over ahead. you, there's no violence. Klitschko's tactic was to paint Fury as an out-of-control maniac, but the Brit turned the tables on him by exposing his over-eagerness and pegged the Ukrainian as the impolite one. Klitschko also tried to be clever by daring Fury to rewatch the Ukrainian's early losses. But Fury's retort showed that he was confident in his own skills to beat the long-reigning champ and that he wasn't banking on a stoppage win as the only way to secure a victory. No, I haven't been studying your losses because them losses were a long time ago. Whoever looked at them last losses, like the guy you, I don't mention his name, who didn't have any, any knowledge on boxing, he may have looked at them losses and took confidence from them, thinking, if they can land that shot, then I can because I'm quick, yeah? But I ain't gonna make the same mistake as they've made. I ain't looking for that. I ain't looking for that one punch that's gonna knock you out. I'm looking for an accumulation of shots. He also displayed that he was deeply familiar with Klitschko's style and that he knew how to defuse it. You have learned and perfected to stand tall, lean back off the jab, not leaning forward, not fighting when the other person's trying to fight. He was so confident in his abilities to do so that he even revealed a game plan to Klitschko straight to his face. Now, I don't mind giving me a game plan away because no matter how many fights you watch in the past, there'll always be something different every time. There was also an interesting part in which Nelson brought up the sauna story. Tell me the story of the sauna. We're in the sauna. About 10 guys in the sauna and it came down to me and Vlad. Everyone starts popping off around us. And it gets down to him and I'm over the other side. And I'm thinking, I've only, I've only had 12, 13 fights. But still in my mind, I was mentally in a competition with him. And no, what are you talking about? I was prepared. I stayed I in believe, for like I 40 minutes. Um, Who got out first? He can say what he wants, he can deny it, whatever. And what did you think at that time? Fought mental victory. He later retorted that the whole scenario unfolded only in Fury's psychotic mind. But even if that was true, the point is that Fury believed it. And as mentioned before, boxing is a mental game. If a man believes that he's superior to his opponent, it can give him great confidence. And that can often be the difference between victory and defeat. Klitschko also accused Fury of being insecure. But Fury retorted by accusing him of being a control freak. A man who falls apart as soon as things fail to go his way. I think and you're a control and freak. It's interesting. And when you can't control the person that you're fighting, you don't like it. You're insecure and you don't like the way I'm carrying on because I'm very unpredictable and you don't know what's going to happen. Now, I can overanalyze these interactions and be completely off base. But the proof is in the pudding. Klitschko was thrown off by Fury's feint, which can be attributed to the Brit's unpredictable nature. Klitschko didn't know if or when Fury was going to attack and it kept him on his heels, tense and unable to launch an efficient counterattack. Fury knew this, and it allowed him to fight his fight and to save energy. In a way, the fight ended up playing out like the face-off did. Klitschko was the tense one and the inauthentic one, while Fury remained relaxed and just being himself. 
And this is interesting because whereas Furistel is organic and fluid, Klitschko's was manufactured by Emmanuel Stewart in order to prevent the Ukrainian from being stopped for a fourth time. So a large part of his fighting character was there as a defensive proxy. And in most of Klitschko's fights, you see that same tension on his face. Thus, Fury was correct in branding Klitschko as a control freak, one who would fall apart as soon as his plan went awry. The second face-off between Fury and Klitschko unfolded much like the first one. Here, Klitschko tried to be coy. I do enjoy where I am right now as a challenger. I am relieved, relaxed, but alert. The difference is, I am just gonna let my hands go. But Fury immediately called him out and admonished him for playing games. Which I didn't in the first fight. And then you will see the difference. I believe he will let his hands go, but my question is, is what happened the first night? Why didn't you let your hands go? That's my choice. So you chose to lose? I chose to lose. What you're saying is you didn't try to win, so you let all your family down, all your people, all the German fans, and you just conned them for money, is that what you're saying? Once again, Klitschko's face was ripe with tension, while Fury who was on the cusp of entering a two-year hellhole of addiction and suicidal thoughts, actually appeared the more relaxed man. In contrast, the Joshua Klitschko face-off was tame, and Klitschko liked the facial tension present in the Fury face-offs. And in the fight itself, Klitschko returned to being the master of boxing and sexual manipulation that had dominated the heavyweight division for close to a decade. Here, he controlled most of the fight's rhythm, as he managed to keep Joshua turning and made him miss. Then, after Joshua was forced to reset, Klitschko would generally return with cleaner shots. He also controlled Joshua with his lead hand, landing jabs or fainting with it in order to land flush right hands. Playing Klitschko's game also tired Joshua out, and he looks exhausted in the same round in which he dropped his opponent. One also has to assume that faulty cardio was partly the cause for Joshua being caught with the shot that dropped him. Meanwhile, Fury can boast of having bested a slightly younger version of Klitschko, one who hadn't been beaten in a decade. You also have to assume that, despite Fury's mind games, Klitschko was a bit more confident in the build-up to that fight than he was in the Joshua fight, where he'd been inactive for more than a year after the Fury bout. On top of all this, Fury beat Klitschko in his adopted hometown of Germany, and he had to fight to get the gloves he wanted and to get the ring mat restructured after he'd found it too spongy, which would have limited his footwork. On the flip side of that coin, Joshua did score with the much cleaner shots on Klitschko than Fury did. This is something we've talked about in another video, but Joshua does tend to have crisper punching technique than Fury. Whereas the Gypsy King tends to slap with his shots, Joshua turns his hips over more bends at the knees and keeps his shots tighter. With this firepower, he hurt and dropped Klitschko, something which Fury never came close to doing. Moreover, he took the fight to Klitschko and ended up removing the judges out of the equation by stopping the Ukrainian. Fury didn't do that. He let the fight go the distance, which could have easily gone against him when one considers the little clean action that took place. This was especially precarious considering that the fight had taken place in Klitschko's adopted hometown, a place where we've seen our share of dodgy calls. So, who performed better against Klitschko? On the one hand, Fury managed to psychologically skull fuck Klitschko and avoided getting hurt. But he also failed to land much of significance on Klitschko and he can't claim to have beaten the Ukrainian up. It would be more accurate to say that he out-hustled the long-reigning champ. On the other hand, Joshua stamped his mark by stopping Klitschko and he did it in a fan-friendly manner, which cemented him as one of the biggest names in boxing. But he also tired himself out badly and appeared on the verge of being stopped. He also lost much of the tactical battle throughout the fight. So, what do you like? Fury's upset win over Klitschko? Or Joshua's knockout drag out affair versus the Ukrainian? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy, folks. Thanks for watching.